it's Melissa. Happy Wednesday. My days are all confused. I'm all mixed up. I am back home, back in my office on the West Coast. Um, I don't know if I caught some of you guys yesterday. If you guys caught me, I was over in the, I was at the Slim Design offices outside Boston. Um, we had lots of fun. We did a Facebook Live over there on the new Quill, which is super cool. Um, but while I was there, hi Libby, while I was there, V4.2 was officially released, right? Came out of open beta, out of closed beta, and it is now the current version of Silhouette Studio. So lots to talk about. Um, I did have a Facebook or a blog post which initially was v4.2 is now an open beta what you should know it was supposed to go on the blog tomorrow except then they went and released it and so then i had to be like okay hold on uh v4.2 released and put it uh, a little earlier on the blog than i had originally planned but that's okay so a couple things that you should know um as you guys hopefully know uh v4.2 is the new version of the software. It is not an upgrade, it is an update. It's what I would consider um, an intermediate um, or, you know, it's an intermediate update, okay? Which means we are not getting huge um, design changes to Silhouette Studio. However, we are getting new features, we are getting bug fixes, and we are getting a lot of differences in the library. That's where you're gonna see the biggest thing, okay? So, V4.2 was a, um, announced and all the features were announced in May of 2018 it is now February 13th and it is finally in open beta I mean it is finally released out of open beta so there are a bunch of new features which we've talked about in our v4.2 series for months okay I've been promoting and uh, not promoting I've been um, putting together blog posts for you so you're ready for today when it's now out okay um, the biggest things I think are things like print bleed, you've got um, the ability to export as a PNG, you've got the puzzles, uh, puzzles uh, overlay, you've got tons of new drawing tools, so no longer do we just have square, rounded rectangle, circle, line, we've got like Christmas tree and airplane and um, there's so many more, they're called flex shapes. We've got, did I mention print bleed, that's one of my favorite things. Um, and then we've got a whole ton of changes to the library. So we'll get to that in a second. A um, couple of things. Not all the features that are released are available to everyone. If you want to maximize your software you, um, experience, you need to not only update, you need to upgrade. So some of the features, such as export as PNG, are available in V4.2, but only if you also have Business Edition, okay? So if you want to get all the bells and whistles, you need to upgrade to, to Business Edition, okay? And you also need to update to V4.2. But should you update yet, okay? Um, so it has been, this software version has been a long time coming to the point that it was so bug heavy um, while it was in closed beta that a lot of us couldn't, a lot of us beta testers couldn't even use it consistently enough to even find bugs. Over the last, I would say, two-ish months, it has become much more stable where I can at least work with it on a daily basis, work in it in a daily basis. Um, previously, we were, it was things like you would type out text and then you couldn't even select it. It was, it was literally useless. You could not be productive and use it. Now, it is to the point where it is much more stable. However, there are still some bugs. I would consider them minor bugs and annoyances. However, they are still there. Um, a couple of the bugs are things like when you copy and then paste into the same work area, everything that you paste no longer has a selection box around it, okay? Um, the problem with that is now you have to reselect everything and move it away. It's, it's not helpful. So that's one thing that you should definitely be aware of. One way to get around this right now, and it's been reported widely in the, hi Terry, it's been reported widely in the um, beta group. One way to get around this copy paste issue is if you wanna copy something and put it in the same work area, first copy it, then open a new design area, paste it there, and then move it back into the um, original work area, okay? So that would be one way to do it. The other way to do it would be instead of doing a copy paste, do a replicate where you select it and hold down, I think it's, uh, without doing it, command and your arrow key. That will put it next to it. So even though it 
no longer selected, you can easily select it because it's not overlapping. Um, some of the other little minor bugs, uh, the prip bleed, like I said, is one of my favorite things. What it's doing is it's putting a bleed area around your print and cuts so that you're not getting any little white edge from the paper if you accidentally, um, or if, you're, so, um, if your machine cuts a little tiny bit off. However, I think, and I think this is a, what a lot of the beta testers have suggested and what a lot of us, you know, feel having used the print bleed area, we really need it to have a preview in Silhouette Studio so we can see where that bleed area is. Because otherwise, if you're doing a whole sheet of stickers and you've got them all close together and you put a print bleed around it, what's going to happen is some of that bleed area is going to bleed into the next sticker. And it's, you're not going to be able to tell until after it prints. Um, the library. The library is the biggest change you're going to see. And I, I anticipated that I was going to get a lot of questions on this, and I have, and I have not even gotten to my email in like two days because, like I said, I've been traveling. Um, no longer are your local user and your cloud um, designs separated. Everything is now in one folder under what will look like your name. The design, everything should still be there. It's just it's all mixed up. So there's no longer this distinguished... Uh, you're not able to distinguish easily by seeing what is on the cloud and what is in local user. However, your folder structure should all still be there, your subfolders, everything. And the designs that were in the cloud are still all in the cloud. It's just not so obvious. So what you will see when you go into your library is your designs are going to have one of three little icons under them. Either a green check box, um, a, a green check, a red, I'm looking at my computer, a red X or a gray lock, okay? A gray lock means the design was purchased from the Silhouette Design Store and it can't be moved out of the, um, it's, it's on the server basically, it's in the cloud, you can't move it. The red check and the green, or the green check, excuse me, and the red X can be toggled back and forth. The green check essentially means your design is on the cloud. If you, if you have a red X, that means it was a local user. Okay, local user design. And like I said, you can toggle back and forth. Why do you want to do this? Well, you may want to um, temporarily put something on the cloud so that if you go sign into another computer, you're able to get it. If the things are on your local user, that means they're essentially on your computer, this one unit that you're using, okay? So the reason for the change with the library and the structure is so that um, you don't have to maintain and manage two different folders, you no, you no longer have to have a commercial use folder in your cloud and a commercial use folder in your local user library. Now you can have one commercial use folder and have a mix of designs in there. This is the thought behind it. You no longer have to maintain two library structures. Um, so that's the biggest thing and we'll, I'll be doing a lot of tutorials on um, the library because there's a lot of changes. There's, a, um, there's things like um, you can now enlarge the preview. Okay, so no longer is the design this big and you're like, I can't see it. No, you can enlarge them so they're this big and then you can select it further and make it um, basically your whole screen so you can preview it very easily. Um, and I have a tutorial on that. If you, um, if you go to the blog post that I linked to right above or next to me, wherever, however it's set up on your computer, I did link, um, you'll be able to see nine Silhouette Studio V4.2 tutorials that I that I did previously. I put them all in one blog post so you can see them. And we talk in there um, a lot about uh, the changes to the library, the visual changes to the library, okay? Um, there's also things like when you save a studio file outside of studio onto your computer, no longer will you have the X um, Silhouette Studio logo. Instead, you will have a preview of that design. But there are a few caveats, okay? If, it's, if your design is not filled in with color, you're just going to see red cut lines. Okay, and if your design is off center, you're, it's going to be like really small and not very useful. Um, if you're saving to somewhere like um, Google Drive or Dropbox, preview won't work. Okay, um, I saw a couple of questions. Does it work um, on Mac? I use a Mac exclusively, and I have had no problems other than what I told you um, as far as the bug. Split screen is back. Yes, Kim, split screen is back. We're gonna, um, I'll be doing a quick tutorial on that in the next, hopefully a couple days, two more trips between now and next Wednesday, so.
<laughs> we'll see how much I, how productive I can be. Um, well, I'm trying to look at what else. Word art templates are back. Um, uh, the lasso selection tool. Again, some of these things are not going to be available in all um, versions of the software. So if you want to get everything, you need to have Business Edition as well. So, should you update? I have been holding off on telling you to update. I have been, I think that right now the V4.2 is the most stable it has been. However, I think that there are some major, major annoyances. If you can get around the copy paste issue, if you can get around, um, there's one other thing that I was looking at. Oh, right click. When you try to right click, you, it's very difficult to now get the right click menu. You have to click directly on the cut line. That didn't used to be the case. You used to be able to right click, you know, wherever you wanted in the work area, okay? So, just like I said, minor annoyances. There are things, I know there's a whole bunch of things. Hi, Willie Prep. Um, there are a bunch of things that they are still working on. However, at this point, especially for Mac users, where you can keep two different versions of the software on your computer, I would recommend um, that you try it, okay? There's no harm in trying it. You can always go back to a legacy version. However, please do not ever update your software, whether you're going from V4.1 to 4.2 or 4.2. 1.468 to 0.7.2, I don't know. Always back up your library, okay? You need to go to uh, your library, right click local user, export local user. That just saves your library in case there's an issue. I'm speaking from experience, okay? I'm just telling you, I'm speaking from experience. Do not update your software without backing up your library, okay? Um, I think that's it. Oh, one other thing. This is a game changer. I can't believe I forgot. You are now able, the software is now able to do automatic backups for you, all right? And so, in 4.2, and I did a tutorial on this last week or the week before. Uh, it's called um, Snapshots, all right? I want you to take advantage of that. But before you even get to 4.2, you need to manually back up in 4.1 or 4, wherever you are, okay? Woo, I just feel like I just spit up 4.2 on you. It's very exciting. Um, again, it's not a perfect version. There are some annoyances. Um, if you are a Mac user and you will be able to have more than one version, I would recommend that you, like I said, download it. Windows um, users, you are not able to have more than one version very easily. There are some workaround, which um, hopefully one of you Windows people can um, chime in on. Um, oh, DXF. How did I forget? DXF is working now. So DXF is the only version um, of a cut file that you can import other than Studio um, that does not need to be traced in the basic version of the software. In the last, God knows how many, 10 or 20 versions of the software, DXF files were all mangled up and the designer was getting blamed and the design was getting blamed. No, it was Solo Studio was corrupting the file. It has been fixed, okay? Um, and I tested it this morning. That's why I'm surprised that I forgot. I imported all these DXF files. No little jiggly lines, how it was all like scribbly. Um, so that's working as well, okay? I'm sure I'll think of more. <laughs> um, and as I said, all the 4.2 tutorials are all together. I will also put them prominently on the front page of the blog so you can find them. But um, don't be scared if you back up your library. Do be scared if you don't back up your library. And do not email me and say, I forgot to back up my library. I'm warning you now. I'm warning you now. Please back up your library, okay? All right, guys. I hope you have a fabulous day. Um, and enjoy 4.2. There's lots of fun features. See you soon.